Over the millennia, few cities have been so contested or seen so much conflict as Jerusalem. Israel regards it as its undivided capital. Today, Donald Trump is expected to declare where he stands and honor a campaign pledge. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. But East Jerusalem has been under Israeli occupation since it was captured by Israel in 1967. Palestinians want it as their capital in a future Palestinian state. The U.S. is delivering a lethal bullet to the heart of the two-state solution. That would be actually the kiss of death to the two-state solution because Jerusalem is at the very heart of the two-state solution. It's the major pillar of it, and there has been many decades-long uh, uh, policy of the U.S., the international community, and everybody in, uh, involved, including the Israelis and the Palestinians, that Jerusalem is a final status uh, issue. Moving the U.S. Embassy from its current home in Tel Aviv could end up taking years. But today, much of the international community spoke out against President Trump's anticipated change to the status quo. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Russia, as well as the Pope, all critical. But also Britain, not on the same page as the president. We think that Jerusalem obviously should be part of the final uh, settlement between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, a negotiated settlement that we want uh, to see. And we have no plans ourselves to, uh, to move our embassy. On the ground, in this city of Palestinians and Israelis, as with almost everything here, the issue is divisive. I think that it's about time, 3,000 years late than, uh, than uh, it should be, or 70 years after everyone admit that uh, it's our uh, capital uh, city. There will be new problems again. There will be a new intifada. Even abroad, as I heard in the news this morning, the Western countries are against it, even more than the Arabs. Already in Gaza this morning, there were some small demonstrations. But in recent years, Palestinian protests have always fizzled out, the victim of weak leadership and fatigue. Arab countries may speak out today, but bigger problems across the Middle East mean for many the Israeli-Palestinian issue is less of a priority. President Trump has said he sees peace between Israelis and Palestinians as the ultimate deal. The chances of that, though, seem as ever very distant. John Donison, BBC News. Barbara Plett, Usher is in Washington. This is uh, a break of policy that's been in place for decades and it goes against the international consensus, Barbara. So why now? Well, here in the U.S., every six months, um, there's a waiver that comes up for the president to defer the move of the embassy to Jerusalem because by U.S. law, it's supposed to do so. So every six months for 22 years, presidents have said, no, we won't do it right now because we think it would be a security risk. Uh, so that's why it's come up now. December is one of those deadlines. Uh, and Mr. Trump uh, did do the waiver in June, but he was quite frustrated by having to do it because he made this campaign promise. And so when it came around a second time, he said, we've really got to uh, deal with this issue. And he decided that he was going to go ahead and recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, his officials tell us, and announce his intention to move the embassy, although that will be uh, quite, uh, quite a long process. So his officials are saying this doesn't really change U.S. policy. They're simply recognizing a reality, which is that Jerusalem does function as the capital of Israel. And all of those issues that are very sensitive uh, about Jerusalem, what its boundaries are going to be, who will have sovereignty over the east and the west, and uh, what the status of the holy sites will be, all of those things, they say, will still be decided in peace negotiations. But we'll have to see how Mr. Trump makes the announcement. According to the officials who briefed us, it doesn't sound like he's going to offer much reassurance uh, to the Arabs and the Palestinians uh, that this that that, that will that will calm their concerns that this really is uh, a step supporting one side in the peace process. So, tell us a little bit more about the various reaction that has been to different parts of the world. Well, you've had reaction uh, in the Arab world from the Palestinians, of course, and also from the custodians of the holy sites, Jordan and Saudi Arabia. 
uh, from Turkey, who is the head of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, all of them basically saying that this is really going to undermine the peace process, that it will prejudge the negotiations on the status of Jerusalem, that it sends a very bad signal, uh, and that it could cause instability and violence because not only the, of the peace process, but because these, uh, these are holy sites to Muslims in Jerusalem. Jerusalem means a lot uh, to them, and that if they see the U.S. making this announcement, there could be a reaction. And uh, You've had similar kinds of comments from the Europeans as well, from the, head, the EU and from Britain. Um, so nobody else is, going, is, is talking about moving their embassy to Jerusalem. Nobody else recognizes it as Israel's capital. Really, the U.S. is quite, um, quite alienated, on the, alienated on this point. Barbara, thank you very much. Barbara Plessasher in Washington.